I don't think you quite understand us, sir. A few of us are endeavoring to raise a fund to buy the poor some meat and drink and means of warmth. Why? Because it is at Christmas time that want is most keenly felt and abundance rejoices. Uh, what can I put you down for? <laughs> Nothing. You wish to be anonymous. I wish to be left alone. This time of year, I can't help but think about my favorite holiday films. Sure, we all know the tried and true classics, but here are three holiday films that never fail to get me in the holiday spirit. The first is A Smoky Mountain Christmas from 1986. This is a cross between um, the Beverly Hillbillies and the Grand Old Opry all tied up in the super special star that is Dolly Parton. Look, it's simple, slightly silly, but it's a generous gift of real smart human wisdom in song and verse from the gentle genius of Parton. It's a gift of the facts of life that matter, all tied up in a, in a Christmas box. And some of the greatest TV stars of the 80s are in it. And hey, it's directed by Fonzie himself, Henry Winkler. Now, kids, I happen to know for a fact you're telling me a fib. See, I used to live over the hill here in the next holler, so if anybody's out calling the police, it ought to be me. No! No, 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 no. please, no. Number two is Nestor the Long-Eared Christmas Donkey from 1977. It's made by Rankin Bass, the same guys who brought you the Christmas classic, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's like Rudolph, except more religious and much more introspective. It's music and magic, pull out your emotions and twist them into something warm that some call the Christmas spirit. It's a great thing to put on the TV for the kids when they're whining about getting more and bigger and better. It's a special little gem. I love it. Elves are supposed to carve me a more accurate version, but you know them elves. Oh well, come on, I'll, I'll show you the rest. Speaking of Christmas spirit, my third and most endearing choice is 1951 Scrooge starring Alistair Sims. The theme of Charles Dickens' immortal story um, that the plight of the poor and the unfortunate is everyone's responsibility is best told in this beautiful version. It's not dished out with sentimentality, rather it's filmed in black and white, dark and moody, cold and drafty. Sims is Ebenezer Scrooge. He shows us a miserly man who's just wearing out time here in a game of adding to his monetary wealth. But when the ghosts rub his face in the woes of the world, we see that life is about doing rather than having. Sims' performance isn't the typical caricature of a miser. Rather, he plays Scrooge believably, like a man who, in the course of a night, through a very plausible nightmare, has transformed money into wisdom. I haven't taken leave of my senses, Bob. I've come to them. From now on, I want to try to help you to raise that family of yours, if you'll let me. This version of Scrooge is a dark, poignant, and effective reminder that what makes us rich isn't how much money we have, but what we do with our time. Happy Holidays. I'm Tom Gregory, and this is Classic Hollywood.